بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم okay now in this section we'll start with wireless lan fundamentals so probably here we'll be seeing multiple topics so in this video i'll be covering wired and wireless comparisons and probably in the next videos we'll also talk about the different types of wireless networks we have and the wireless LAN devices, the different devices used in the wireless LAN infrastructure. And also we'll try to understand the difference between the ad hoc mode and the infrastructure mode. So probably here we'll be talking about the difference between the wide and the wireless networks. So let's get started. So the first thing we'll try to understand the wide networks. So basically, you know, from the basic CCNA studies, you, you probably aware of this basic concepts where we are going to connect the devices with the help of wide now the wide networks where we do have a wire wire like like if you take an example a simple lan if you want to provide the connectivity between the computers we we use some kind of cable so we do have some kind of cable which is used to provide the connectivity and again this will act as a transmission medium to send the information from one device to another device and your information that is nothing but your data zeros and the ones will be converted into electrical signals or the light signals depending upon the type of the cable we are using like if you're using utp cables or copper cables it, it goes in the form of electrical signals again if you're using some fiber cables now your information will go in the form of light signals so the wide networks connects the devices between them with the, with the help of some cables, the wire. Uh, typically, it can be LAN or WAN, so it's like common for all. And for LAN, IEEE 802.3 is the standard which is defined for wide Ethernet. So if you are setting up your LAN with your wide network, then this is a standard name or 802.13. It, uh, it is going to define the standards like the set of rules, the protocols. Or how the devices to should interact with each other, the way they communicate. So these all defined by IEEE Institute of Electronics and Electrical Engineers, and they will ratify the standards. So same way, 802.11 is again the standard which is defined for wireless. So again, that comes in the next slide. And in order to provide the connectivity, again you will be require multiple devices. Like especially in the LAN, you require some cables. And you need some interconnecting devices like hubs. Uh, hubs are no more used. We can say switches, which are used specifically connecting between the LAN. And when you're connecting uh, over the WAN links or different networks, you again require some routers providing the connectivity between different networks. And again, in terms of setup, if you're trying to set up a, a LAN, a wide network, then probably there is a too much work you have to do and you require at least two people uh, to do the complete cabling and the setup which is required like you you will be having some specific dedicated uh, technicians who are uh, generally they are going to pull some wires probably through the ceiling or through the floor at the time of construction the construction sites along with the electrical wiring and other things and the number of people doing this task may vary depending upon the size of the uh, network as well as the size of your building or the network. Now again, you need to plan these things uh, prior before you actually start using the network. Just like you do some kind of uh, electrical wiring you do at the time of construction. Similar way, you need to plan the things prior to the, uh, to the actual use. And again, different tools are used. You need some kind of crimpers. Uh, crimping tools and the cable strippers, punch tools, punch down tools, stoners, and the cable tester. These are all required for you to ensure that we do have a proper cable connectivity on all the sides. Now, again, the speed in terms of speed, again, with a wide network, you can go up to gig. Like most of the switches, they, they, if they support fast Ethernet, they can go up to 100 Mbps. And of course, the WAN links, it depends upon the service border. And this can go even nowadays, most of the interfaces like the router interfaces or the switch interfaces, they do by default support gig interface. So they do something around 1000 Mbps or one gig speed. That is something what is offered nowadays. 
So you can go with more than that, like 10 gig, depending upon the different types of interfaces and the devices supported on that. Now this is something you already know, the wide network. So our job here is just trying to compare how it is going to be uh, different a little bit with the wireless networks. So let's move on with the wireless networks. Now with wireless networks here, the name itself says the wireless means we are providing the connectivity between our devices. Like you can take a simple example, your home setup where you have a Wi-Fi router and this router is providing the connectivity to your laptop and also your, your devices like your mobile phones or other devices which are using the wireless setup. So that is a simple example of your a small wireless network in your home. Now we do have a connectivity, so we are still connected, but without a wire, that's what it says wireless. Now again, if there is no wire, then how the data is going to be transferred? The data transfer, again, the air is, again, the medium to transfer the data. And probably these antennas, they do generate some kind of radio frequency signals, the radio signals, and that, uh, that radio frequency signals will be responsible for sending the data. Means in the form of radio frequency signals we can say like in case of wide networks the they use electrical signals here we call we can call them as radio frequency signals here so you can compare the radio frequency signals same as your cell phones so if you're using your cell phones probably you do get the signals from the nearest uh, probably nearest uh, antenna uh, which is again covering the area now as long as you're within that particular uh, coverage area you can get the signal so you can compare this with the TV or radio stations as well they are also one form of a wireless signal but again this the frequency will differ again the the signals what we'll be using in our LAN that will differ we'll talk about more in the in the radio frequency topic later on so here the the medium of connectivity is like the radio frequency signals uh, the information is carried over the wire, over the wireless, without any wire, over the air, in the form of radio frequency signals. And again, the standard for the wireless is 800.11. So all your products, the wireless products will have the 800.11 standard. And then you have some extensions like A, B, G, A, C. These different extensions will define different parameters, the speeds, the specifications will vary again. So we'll talk more on that in the... Uh, in the standards, wireless standards, probably they will try to understand the common standards which can be used with with wireless and what did what and how they differ. Now again, the benefits of the wireless networks, if you compare with the wide network, it is easy to set up because you don't need to uh, do some kind of cabling or plan the things prior. Probably that's really not required because there is no way there is no wire, so it's it's kind of easy to set up and you just need uh, one person or a few people required to set up like again if you have let's say if you are setting up a wireless network in your office where you have two floors then probably you can plan some devices like access points and and you can configure uh, probably done by one person is something uh, you can you can do with with just a minimum uh, minimum people and of course the fewer configurations are required because the configurations mostly it will be GUI and it's it's a kind of easy kind of configurations you can do. So a simple example is your wireless router you use in your home connections. You just connect that WAN cable which goes to the internet and then you, you set up some few things like define the network and define the password and few other parameters, SSID. And once you just do that, now your network is ready to go ahead. So, of course, depending upon the size of the network, that, uh, that will vary again. The next thing is like uh, mobility. Now, one of the major advantage with the wireless is you, your devices are not fixed. Like if you are using a wired connection, so basically you are connecting your PC, you do have a cable. And it's something you cannot move your device. And if you want to move to a different place, like let's say if I'm using my laptop, then probably what I need to do is I need to uh, remove the cable and probably connect to the cable on the other side if you're moving between the floors like that. So with the help of wireless, you can still get connected. You can be connected uh, as long as you're within the coverage area. 
So if I'm moving from moving my device from here, probably to here, I can still be connected to the network. And that's that's the main advantage we get with the with the wireless here. So it provides you something called mobility uh, for the users as they can connect within the network means they can be a part of the network as long as they are within the coverage area. Now the speed in terms of speed, if you compare the wireless, the, the speed will be a little bit less because with wide network, you get a better throughput with a high speed data transfer rates. But when it comes to wide, you, you can get up to from minimum up from two Mbps to you can still get up to 400 Mbps to even uh, one gig or 1.3 gig. Again, it depends totally on the what kind of wireless standard you're using. Like I think there is something called 8.11 AC standard. If you're using it, then you can get this throughput. But most of the wireless devices like the 8.11 BRG, which are commonly used, the standard, they can offer from 11 Mbps to 54 Mbps speeds. And again, the speed will, it totally depends upon the number of users. Again, uh, you connect the more and, and type of uh, wireless device you're using or the wireless access point you're using. So there are plenty of factors which will uh, decide the speed or the throughput in your wireless network. But when you compare this with a wired network, you will get lesser throughput if you are comparing with your wired network here. And one more thing you need to remember, you need to consider about security here. Because the wireless offer you the benefits of mobility, like as long as you are within this coverage area, we can still get connected. That's the advantage we get. And also it is prone to some kind of security issues. Like if there is any, any user who is probably might be a visitor and if he's also sitting in that coverage area or within your campus, then there's a possibility that that particular user may try to connect to your network and gain access to the network resources. So that's something you need to consider. So that's the reason in terms of wireless security is important. So most of the wireless standards, they do support some kind of strong uh, authentication where we can ensure that if any user is trying to connect to the wireless network, so it's going to prompt for some password and that password is kind of encrypted password. And also while you are uh, sharing the data, most of the data, again, you can encrypt your data. So to ensure that if someone, if these two devices are talking to each other, if someone captures your data, probably he cannot be able to see that particular data. So, so we'll talk more on this in the in the security section where we'll try to see the different security options we have with the wireless in wireless security. And then finally, we need to also know what are the devices required. So there are multiple devices required, like we need an access point which is going to provide you the connectivity, just like it will do the job of the switch, a centralized device from where you can connect. And if you're in your network, if you are running in a company network where you have uh, hundreds of access points like airports or shopping malls, then we need another device called wireless LAN control. So where you can control or manage all the access points from one single centralized location.